th th thank you very much, uh, the honorable moderator. Uh, I would simply say that uh, I feel deeply honored uh, to be associated with the launching of this uh, important publication, Argent and Ambassadors for Peace. And I would like to congratulate Dr. Liviu Olteanu for uh, such important achievement. I think this book is coming at a time when the world is facing so many crises. In 1945, following the tragic events which took place in Europe, we witnessed the Holocaust and we say never again. But then, 1994, we witnessed the genocide of the Tutsis in Rwanda, during which Hutus who were opposed to that genocide, the Tuas and others were also killed. 1995, we witnessed the genocide in Srebrenica. And while I'm speaking, unfortunately, our world is also witnessing atrocity crimes of a such a nature that when I visited in November Iraq, I went to Dahuk. I visited the refugee camp in Kanke, and I spent the whole day in Lalich with the spiritual leader of the Yazidi community, Baba Sheikh. I was extremely moved by the words, the testimonies from so many women who were abducted, used as sex slaves by Daesh, the so-called Islamic states. Hence, we are here today, trying to see how we can continue to move forward, to make our world a better place. And uh, I cannot but quote Dr. Marshall when you use him in the forefront of your paper, saying, the United Nations was not created to take mankind to heaven but to save humanity from hell. Hence, we need to really question where we stand today. And I would like simply to say, looking forward, uh, that uh, the content of this book, the numerous uh, conclusion and recommendation contained in this book, it is our responsibility to bring them around the world to spread this message because this is a message for peace and that's why I believe that all of us here share the same objective to work towards a peaceful world in which uh, crimes such as the one we are witnessing today in Syria, in Iraq, in many other parts of the world that this come to an end. We have the possibility, if we decide to engage ourselves as agents and ambassadors for peace. And uh, in this regard, I would simply conclude my words here by thanking once again the people of Spain and the government of Spain for their engagement in working towards peace. Uh, I should say that uh, two days ago, I was with uh, the representative of Spain in Casey, the King Abdullah Center, which my good friend uh, Sarah just mentioned now. And, and during that uh, meeting in Addis, uh, he reminded us, Ambassador Alvaro uh, Albacete, that the role of religion and the role of religious leaders, both in aiding and mitigating incitement to violence, needs to be more closely investigated. In many parts of the world, he said, religion is a powerful motivating factor for people. Religious institutions, their leaders, and key actors may exert as much, if not more, influence and authority than their secular counterparts. And uh, I cannot but fully concur with those words because at the end of the day, we have to realize that peace itself uh, is a religious concept. Uh, messages about peace abound. 
being uh, practically universal uh, in religion. I think there is not a single religion which is not preaching peace, which is not preaching non-violence, which is not preaching love. But unfortunately, today we are seeing people committing the worst crimes, the crimes of the crimes, I mean genocide, and committing such a terror in the name of God. And this is simply unacceptable, and that is why we have to continue to join hands, all of us throughout the world, to make sure that things will change. Unfortunately, when we see uh, sometimes the ways issues are being addressed uh, in one of the most important, if not the most important organ of the United Nations, I mean the Security Council, we tend sometimes also to be a bit frustrated. And that's why uh, three days ago I issued a statement regarding the situation in Syria, one more statement, in which I show that within seven days, seven places which were supposed to protect life were attacked by parties in the conflict. When you see a situation where the last pediatrix in that place was killed, and hence the Security Council still failing to protect the population in Syria. So we as members of this world, members of humanity, we have to take also responsibility and try to make as much as possible uh, pressure. And that is something Spain, sitting today in the Security Council, is trying to do. But as you know, if there is some time, as I used to say, uh, an organ which is not too much democratic, that is the Security Council, where you have five members who have the veto, and which unfortunately, in some circumstances, fail the very dear reason why the veto was put in this important charter of the United Nations, to make sure that peace and security is maintained. But when we see thousands, hundreds of thousands of people being killed, and, the, and seeing situations which are a serious threat to peace and security, and not being able to address it properly, we then have the right to question. I thank you.